Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to install Windows 11 on a virtual machine using VirtualBox software, virtualization software. So it's pretty simple to do and installs kind of like it does for Windows 10, so you just need to have the ISO file. And I have another video that shows you how to download it if you're watching this before Windows 11 was actually released. So right now it's in kind of a development beta test version, but you could still get the uh, ISO file if you look hard enough. So I already have one here that I configured, so I'm going to do another one for you. So what you want to do is just same thing as any other virtual machine. Click on New. Type this, call this Windows 11. Let's call it Dash 2 since I already have one. And I'm going to put it with my other VMs here. So let's go to VirtualBox VMs. And we'll make a new folder for this. Call this Windows 11-2. Okay, select that folder <clears throat> and now for the version since there's no Windows 11 in VirtualBox right now we'll click the next closest thing Windows 10 64-bit and we'll give it about six gigs of RAM for now and then we're going to create a virtual hard disk and it's, we're going to keep the it pick the same location as the virtual machine file so we'll keep that we'll say 50 gigs is good for this since we're just testing we'll leave it dynamic and we'll leave it a VDI, which is VirtualBox image. And we'll click on Create. So now we have our VM, so we just need to attach the Windows 11 ISO file. So we're going to select that VM, go to Settings, and then Storage. And then you should have an optical drive here. If not, you could add one. And we're going to browse to where we have that ISO file, which I have here. Select that and click OK. So now it's attached. So now we just need to start the VM. So you can say, see we have a different looking Windows logo there. So now when you first see this, it looks just like Windows 10. So you might be thinking, did I download the Windows 10 ISO files? But you didn't, so we'll click on Next. You'll see it looks different in a minute here. So we'll click on Install now, just like you normally would. Okay, so we don't have a product key, obviously. So we'll click on that. And now you can pick your version of what you want out of these choices. Home, Pro, Team. So we'll just do Pro just for fun here. And accept the license agreement. Now we're not doing an upgrade, so we'll do the custom here. We'll pick all 50 gigs of our drive, our virtual drive. Click on Next. So now this is the part where it's going to take a while, and this looks like just like Windows 10 as well. So we'll pause the video and then come back when this is done. Okay, so it finished that part of the process and rebooted itself like normal. So we'll see what comes next here. Okay, so now it's rebooting itself again. So this process is taking quite a bit of time, so I'm just editing out the uh, stuff that you don't want to sit there and watch, like the little circle spinning around. So next it had you pick a keyboard layout like you normally do when you're installing Windows, but I had the video paused, so I kind of missed that part. So now it's checking for updates, and then we'll see what comes next. All right, so now you get a choice if you want to set up for personal use or for work, so if you want to connect a domain, and use other Microsoft services, you choose that. I'm just going to pick set up for personal use. As you can see, it's kind of, they're going with that cartoony type theme, which is what people like these days, I suppose. So now here's what I like. Normally when you do Windows 10, you, they want you to put your Windows account, like your, you know, your Outlook email or whatever, to use as your sign-in. And you could actually go in and change it to a, uh, what's the word, the standalone account later on. So this one, if you click on sign in options, you could do an offline account. That's what I meant to say. And then it gives you a little warning here saying they really want you to sign in with an account. So don't let this fool you. So you want to go, if you want to do a uh, offline account, you got to click on limited experience, which I don't think is really limited. You just won't get bombarded with all the social media and cloud and connect this and connect that stuff if you just want a straight Windows login. So let's just say we're going to do uh, T. Smith for fun there. So it even gives you another chance to use an online account. We're going to click Next. 
then password. Confirm the password. And then security questions, you got to answer three of these. First pet's name was Rover. Let's see. Childhood nickname. And let's see, oldest cousin, Bob. Okay, so now you have these privacy settings like you do for Windows 10. I always turn everything off because I want to be left alone. They don't need to know what I'm doing. Accept. And more waiting. And now you'll see this typical thing like you're used to seeing on Windows 10 where it says hi and getting things ready for you. And then this process is going to take quite some time as well. So hopefully uh, when the production version comes out, it's not going to be this much of an ordeal to install it because a lot of people are going to be upset about that. So this says it might take a few minutes and it's more than a few minutes. So we now we have a new message. Please keep your PC on and plugged in. Don't turn off your PC. That should be obvious when installing Windows. All right, good things coming your way. Don't turn off your PC once again. Okay, making sure everything is ready to go. So working on a few things. Almost there, so they say. All right, almost there again. Okay, I see a desktop starting to appear here. Looks like it doesn't quite fit on the screen. And of course they got Microsoft Edge right on there, ready to use. Okay, so that was uh, quite the lengthy uh, installation. So like I said, hopefully the production one's not gonna be, or not take so long, but then again, I'm doing this on VirtualBox, you know, using a lot of my system resources. So that could have been part of the problem too. So, okay, so now it's searching for a display driver, so it might have to do some additional setup here. So once you first have it installed, it brings you to this pin section with some apps right here. Well, you know, like kind of default apps. Looks like it's, that's going to be the start menu itself. Kind of interesting here. So I haven't played too much with it, so once I kind of figure out how it works, I'll probably do a video on you know, some of the new features and stuff. So look for that. But for now, if you want to try installing it, you could give that a shot. If you're running VirtualBox, I have another video on where to get the uh, ISO file. So you could download it, so you have something to install it with. So check that out. Anyways, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe.